Hey everybody, so I just want to introduce you to some more common objects and techniques in Houdini. The first one is another use of the group node. The group node's a very handy node. We use it for all sorts of things. Let's just drag in a box, dive inside so we can access the geometry. Here's our box in our perspective window. Create a group node. We've looked at how to group using bounding regions, and that's very handy. Another very handy way to group is by normals. And as we've discussed before, normals are the vectors that are perpendicular to the surface of an object that describe the way in which light is reflected off of the object. So we can use those normals to also select edges of an object that face in a particular direction. I can say keep by normals. And so for instance, let's say I wanted to only scatter points on the top of this cube. I could say only select the normals that are pointing upwards, that are pointing one in the y direction. I'll visualize my group, and you see, ah, it selected the whole cube. Why is that? That's because the spread angle is very wide. If we turn down the spread angle past a certain point, we'll see it only selects the top of our box. So now, uh, if we set our group name to dollar sign OS, which just makes the group name match the object name, we can call this top. And now the group name is also top. And we scatter points onto the group top. We see all of our points are nicely scattered on the top of our cube. And I'm using this pink tab to ghost the cube so we can see where our points are scattered. And this works equally well with other shapes. Now a sphere, of course, has normals that don't all point in exactly the same direction. It's a sphere, so every normal actually points in a different direction radiating out from the center. That's what this spread angle is about. right? Because unlike a cube, a sphere doesn't have a single top flat surface. And you might say, okay, well, hey, I've seen that before. We, we did that just fine with the bounding regions. We used a bounding region of, say, a bounding box. We moved its center up to, say, point 0.75, and that selected the top of the sphere. So what's the difference? The difference is, and this is something we're going to be talking more and more about uh, as the semester goes on, the difference is proceduralism. What does that mean? That means if the size of the sphere changes, the selection doesn't change in a predictable or logical way, right? If we make our sphere larger, we still want just the top section selected. It's not going to do it because we're dealing with a bounding box, this bounding box. So as I make the sphere larger, it interacts weirdly with that bounding box. Let's make it higher resolution. So as I make the sphere larger, I can even make it so large that the box is inside of it, and then it doesn't select anything at all. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we solve this problem by selecting by normals instead of using a bounding box. The bounding box is still extremely useful in certain circumstances, but in the circumstance of a sphere that we might change the size of, now, as I scale my sphere, my selection remains exactly the same. So let's switch back to the box. We're selecting the top of the box, scattering some points on the top of the box. 
Let's just scatter a few. And now, for instance, we can put some chimneys on this. We'll drag in a tube. We'll copy to points. Take our scattered points. Take our tubes. Put down a merge node. We'll merge our building back with its chimneys. And now we can go in and work on these tubes a little bit. We'll give them, um, we'll give them some additional resolution. Scale them down to be more chimney-like. And we see immediately the problem that we have. Right? We don't want our chimneys hanging down the side of the building like that. We want them on the roof. How do we deal with that? Well, that is the transform node. And you saw the transform node in the Houdini Isn't Scary tutorial. And we're going to scatter onto a transformed version of our box. So I'll ghost the box and look at the points. And the transformed version of our box will be less wide and less deep. So you see the points have all moved in from the edges. And this is another example of proceduralism in that my chimneys no longer come all the way to the edge of the box regardless of the size of my box. Because my transformed box, my smaller version of the box, is proportional to, is relative to, my original box. So if I want to randomize the height of these tubes, do an attribute randomize here. And obviously it defaults to randomizing CD, which is color. We want to randomize scale. And it makes them all different heights, but it also makes them all different widths. So this is another thing I want to point out. Many of you have discovered this already. You have a minimum value and a maximum value on each dimension of your randomization. So I can say I don't want to randomize the X the width of these tubes, and I don't want to randomize the z, the depth of these tubes. I only want to randomize the y, the height of these tubes. And I don't want to give them the possibility of being having a height of zero. So I'll say the minimum height is, for instance, 0.3. So now I'll get some short ones. I'll get some tall ones. But they will all be the same thickness. So let's take another look at grouping by normal, and let's take the front off of this box. So let's make another group from our original box, not our transformed box. And we'll select the front face of this cube, so not the top, but the front, the Z facing side. And one of the nice things I can do call this front, is I can delete a group with the delete node. So I delete, what do I delete? I delete front. And now my box's front has been removed. I can, holding down the Y key, cut the old box being merged in, merge in the new hollow box, and now we see, oh, well, that's interesting, but we have a bit of a problem. And we haven't confronted this before because before when we were building buildings on our planet surface, it didn't matter that the basements of the building were really deep. But now if you want to see inside this building, you know, maybe we don't want these chimneys hanging down so far. So that's another feature I'm going to show you of 
the geometries here, uh, that also is another example of proceduralism. So this center point, if I move it to point 5, I see nicely all of my chimneys sit on top of the building. Because rather than being scaled from their center, they're now being scaled from 0.5 meters below their center, which is the bottom of the tube because they have a height of 1. And they sit nicely on top of my building now. But what happens if I want to make my tubes shorter? The bottoms don't line up anymore. Now they're unaligned because my tubes are only 0.6 in height, but I've moved my center down 0.5, so I would have to use 0.3 here, half of the height, of the, and now they sit nicely again. To make this procedural, what I want is I want these two numbers to change together, and you're often going to do this in Houdini in a lot of different circumstances. It's very easy to do. I can simply right-click and copy the height. I say copy parameter. Go over to center, and I say paste relative reference. And now my center and my height are linked. But I don't want my center and my height to be equal. I want my center to always be half my height. So I go into center and I say divided by, which is a forward slash, divided by 2. Return. And now, no matter what the height of my chimneys, they will always rest flat on the surface. This is another example of proceduralism. This value is relative to this other value. And again, how did I do that? I took the height by saying copy parameter. I went up here. I said paste relative references. And then because I wanted to do some math on it, I just typed that math in. So height divided by 2. That'll keep these chimneys sitting on top of the structure. So I'm looking at another common node, which is the poly extrude. Because our problem with our box here is that it has no thickness. Poly extrude very easily gives us that thickness. We just insert the poly extrude node, increase the distance, and now we have some thickness. And there's no interior to this box, which is also why we see the bottoms of our chimneys here. Um, so we definitely want to output a backside, and now the bottoms of our chimneys are inside that back face. So turn it off, right, and we're seeing it's still a thin box, it just has a lip. But now when we output back, now it's a solid box. One other thing in this quick additional set of Houdini objects that are useful common objects. Uh, we know how to scatter points on a surface, but we don't know how to scatter points inside of a space. Um, and you might think it's like scatter inside or scatter on volume. It's not. It points from volume. And unfortunately it also functions totally differently. So let's go back to our original box. And it creates ordered points inside the volume. And in order to change that, I can get fewer points by increasing my point separation. And I can have the points be random, not so orderly, by increasing my jitter scale. And now my points are floating around inside the box, and I can do a copy to points as usual. Copy to points. Copy a sphere to those points. 
crank down the scale, merge it into my final output, and I have a nice building filled with spheres. Now you see my spheres are sticking out a little bit here. Um, I could create another transformed box just by inserting a transform node here. And I can just take my uniform scale down. And now the box that I'm creating points in is considerably smaller than the box we're seeing. You can see the outline ghosted of this box. So the points themselves are in a smaller volume. So the spheres stay within the confines of the box. Just a few more objects and concepts in Houdini as we move forward.